right now in Haiti, hit today by a powerful earthquake. First, the president of Haiti saying that the damage is unimaginable, catastrophic. And people looking for help in any way they can. Right now, there just isn't enough help available. You know, you see it and you just really can't understand what's going on. I remember just a lot of rubble, a lot of buildings had collapsed, a lot of families were sitting and kind of broken. And I think at that moment, I, I had just graduated, so I had very little money in my bank account, but I had a belief that I could change the world. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. What can I do, at least in a little way, to help them? Jason Lee's desire to help those affected by the earthquake led him and a few friends to busk in a New York subway station with the goal of raising $100 for Haiti. And we were out there for three or four hours and we had raised $70. But throughout the process, I had my flip cam and we were filming. We we're like, hey, let's put this online and let's see if we can raise the remaining $30. Jason made a video called My 100 for Haiti and uploaded it to YouTube. Within a week, the video had over 7,000 views and had raised nearly $700. That was really the beginning of Jubilee Project because I think that was the first time that I realized and my friends realized that film and media and stories are so powerful and such a powerful medium to do good. Jason, along with his brother Eddie and their friend Eric, started making videos for their Jubilee Project YouTube channel. Jason and Eddie both had full-time jobs, and Eric was a student at Harvard Medical School, so they could only make videos in their spare time. One weekend, Jason was given the task of coming up with a simple story for their next short film. So I was like kind of thinking about it, and I'd been inspired by like this encounter I had on the subway where I was like sitting alone in the subway and there's a girl across from me, and she had these headphones on. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I kind of want to talk to her, but I was like, no, but what if she can't hear me because she has her headphones on? I don't know. I don't know. Somehow I came to that story. Anyways, came up with a story. We wrote it. We filmed it in three hours. And we like literally had to call five girls to be the girl in the film. And everyone was like, no, I don't want to do it. Finally, they agreed to do it. They come, we shoot it, and we put it online, and we, we just didn't think anything of it. The short film entitled Love Language went viral and had over a million views in its first few weeks. The video's influence could be seen in the hundreds of remake videos that flooded YouTube. That was crazy. I think it's one of those moments to kind of pinch yourself and you say like, what the heck is going on? In 2012, Jason, Eddie, and Eric took a bold step. They moved from New York to California to pursue Jubilee Project full time. So literally we had a couple of calls and within about a week's time, we all decided we're gonna quit. So I quit my job, Eddie quit his job, Eric took leave from med school. We probably should have been thinking a little bit more about like, what are we doing? But at that time, we had so much peace because it just felt like we were doing what we were supposed to do. In January of 2015, Jubilee Project released their short film called Blind Devotion, which had a unique journey to becoming viral. I was in Korea at the time. And I got a message, I was like, hey, are you seeing what's happening? And I was like, well, what are you talking about? And like, blind devotion's going crazy right now. And at the time, I checked and I was like, oh, this is weird, why is it at 600,000? And then I checked again and I was like, why is this at 2 million? And every day, again, the same thing was happening. It's just millions and millions and millions. And we were starting to get calls from like Good Morning America, Queen Latifah, HuffPo was featuring it, BuzzFeed, Mashable, everyone, it, was, it felt like it was everywhere. I don't know if everyone else felt like that. I felt like it was everywhere. I think a lot of times when you f see that much success for one film, you begin to think about success in that way. Man, we need millions of views. So I'm learning the long and hard way that, you know, we'll never quite be happy with view count, power, fame, money, all of these things really, really are things that a lot of times we want more of, but are really unfulfilling ultimately. During this time, Jason learned another hard lesson when he faced one of the biggest changes to Jubilee Project since its inception. A lot of times we glamorize this idea of following our dream and we think, oh, if we can do that, then it's going to be so easy and so smooth. But in a lot of ways, the journey just continues to get harder in other ways. Within the past year and a half or so, 
both Eddie and Eric have moved on to different projects. Now, Eric's gone back to medical school, and Eddie is now married and doing other work, which is awesome. But it was really, really tough for me because I kind of felt like, as long as we're in this together, we'll be okay. And then suddenly we weren't in this together. And more than anything, it just made me really afraid. There was like a lot of fear of, what if I'm not good enough by myself? And that was really frightening, but it was also really necessary for me on my journey. Because I think it really made me reevaluate once again, why are you doing this? Something that's always been really important to me growing up was my faith. My family and I, we had always gone to church and we always believed in, in God and in Christ. And I think that that always stuck with me, this idea that we're not supposed to just be on this earth to help ourselves, but we're really called to love other people. Ultimately, my passion in life is to inspire other people. It's crazy, right? Because I never intended to start Jubilee Project. I'm supposed to be like on Wall Street right now, making six-figure salary and helping businesses. But I'm in LA making films for YouTube, you know, which is crazy. The things that I've been lucky enough to be a part of and see and experience and the ways that we've been able to touch people's lives along the way have been so special. And I would never change any of that. So I locked myself in my room for two days. I downloaded After Effects. I skipped classes, like I like didn't eat, I like two days, all I did was this video. And then I posted the video. 